Welcome to FME Attention Undivided. Welcome, welcome. I am your host, Dano. I am every Futurama character rolled into one. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have an esteemed guest, one of the most exciting names in underground hip hop today. Oh, jeez. Oh, he, shit. That's... He's the one, he was on the block like Sudoku. <laughs> Doof. Doof. What's, up, man? <laughs> What's up, dude? Hey, man. I like when people respect and remember things. That shit's beautiful. <laughs> hey, you, you do have that knack of just saying shit that, that like kicks you out of the groove and makes you look up and go, what now? Like, <laughs> who is the, the that's how I touch base with the weirdos. The line was like, I'm going to get the bag and fix my posture. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get a bag and get my posture fixed. That's bro. I, I be skating shit. I got back problems. <laughs> shit is amazing. If yeah, no, no, no. Uh, that's a story right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's just like, bro, I don't know. I... I'm never crazy. I've never been a crazy huge like subject matter guy, but like yeah. what I do pick up, I pick up through like comedy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like if it's gonna make somebody laugh, it's gonna be a good bar. You know what I'm saying? Like and like vice vice versa. Like I was taught like comedy in literature, like or via literature. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like my mom, like she was really big on. <laughs> Like uh, like just old school nursery rhymes, like the like one bright day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight back to back. They yep. face each other through their sword, shot one another. Like just all types of comedic, like you know, what I'm saying just pun on words. I watched Matt Abbott and Costello growing up. You know, what yep. I'm saying just R. I. like Paul Mooney, R.I.P. Paul Mooney. Yo, R.I.P. Paul Mooney, man. Transition, man. That should fucking Ooh. yeah. That I mean the and I. I've told this story to, to other people, but like, so my dad is from Oakland and he, uh -huh. he wasn't all the way. Right. But like he, so he basically had this milk crate cart, milk crate full of comedy cassettes. Word. He just gave them to me. A milk crate full of comedy cassettes. Yes. That's like a lot of cassettes. It is. And so, like, <laughs> some of that shit was like perfectly fine for my age, like the Smothers Brothers or whatever, right? Yeah. But, dude, Richard Pryor was in there. Robert Williams was in there. Yeah. And like, so I'm like, I don't know, ten or some shit, and I'm, I'm like, I put these on before I go to bed, and I put it on, and Richard Pryor's like, "Have you ever needed something so bad you'll suck dick for it?" And he's like going into. The <laughs> And I'm like, whoa! It's coming out of the speaker. You're like, what? <laughs> like, Yo, and like, but it was it was amazing because they were talking real shit. Like, going from right. cocaine addict to raising a kid. Like, they were talking the real cycle, right? Adulthood. That's, so right. Really That's what I got out of comedy is just like a million things before I was even conscious enough to know what the world was like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I would. I would pick up mad little like morsels of like small subjects out of comedy and stuff. And then even that would like remind me what shit was <laughs> like that I just came across in real life. Like I probably seen a million high people in my life beforehand, yep. but when I saw some comedians talking about, it, I was like, oh, that's what they was doing. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. comedy, like especially now, like, cause like, especially now I'm like really big on like my, like my talk show like hosts and all types of shit, you know what I'm saying? Just like to, just to even stay updated. But like, I feel like a lot of times we get confused into thinking that like, just cause something's funny, they not telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's like most of the comedians been like, a, like been telling you the truth about what's going on for years. Like, like fucking, yeah, man, that's really, that's really it. Like, the comedians will tell you what's going on, and then, like, you turn on, like, CNN, and they talk about it as soon as it becomes a problem or something like that. We're just like, yeah, man. There's another, there's another one, like, that I was thinking about. 
Yeah. Just all types of, you know, comedians getting to it first. You know yeah. They got they got no choice. Like, because after a while, if you're always lying, it's like probably not going to be playing no more. The funniest dude has been tapped in for, that's what I was about to say. I say this year after year, South Park low key is like one of the best forms of like knowing what happens year after year. Like, since Ooh, it's that's it's cool. Cool. Cause like, yo, you could look at the news from like 1999 and they'll tell you any old fucking thing, but right. South Park will give you all the little pieces and then you'll like figure out what to do with them. Like, you'd be like, oh, that must be kind of like, you could put together your own perspective of that shit, which is like, that like, the comedy shit is really what helps me like breathe through a lot of this shit man like especially yep. with the rap industry being as weird as it is you know what i'm saying like yeah no and, and that's that was actually my first question and the the kind of the most important question i wanted to to, to ask you was like moving from like skateboarding into rap and and moving through into the spaces you're moving how did you figure out Who's good to do business with and who sucks to do business with? Well, the thing is, is like for even now, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty good about keeping my business my business. So I'm the type of motherfucker is like, I'm probably like I got I got some like some of the illest music homies, you know what I'm saying? Like I've had I've been friends with all types of ill, like especially hip hop artists, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And we've been friends for years and maybe only put like one or two songs together if we have any music together at all. You know what I'm saying? So especially when it comes to my music shit, like for the most part, it's so easy to like not work with anybody just because like since I started doing it, like, like I was kind of told like, yo, you don't want to let everybody in the dojo. You know what right. I'm saying? Like you kind of want to, you want to have like a couple degrees of separation and like keep yourself... I don't know, don't lock yourself in with nobody. So it's like, for a while, I didn't know if I could, like, if I was putting myself in the right places with certain people. And then it's been like, it's been some situations, like even kind of recently where I've been like, where I drive, you know, I'm always asking like how I can make myself change to the next level. And it's like, yo, like, what? <laughs> like, what opportunity to dick ride did I not take? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Yeah. Who's the one person I should have said like, oh, hey, what's up to when I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it goes both ways, you know, but for me, it's like just the way I walk through life, man. I just don't, <laughs> I don't try to occupy space with too many people that I don't really want to be around, you know what I'm saying? People that I don't feel are going to get it or like, like for the most part, it's like, yo, especially from where I'm from, like, it's kind of like safest to assume that most people don't want to deal with you. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, like in Virginia, a lot of times, like when you, I, I can't speak for all parts of Virginia or like even Richmond. Cause like right. Richmond was where I first kind of started getting like, you know, physical, like around me love, mm -hmm. but it's like seven, five, maybe a lot of times it's like, yo, you could be doing something and like, you don't know those other guys across the way, but y'all might just end up not liking each other just because y'all doing something semi similar right and like it's just like a like not even a local zone but it's like people just territorial it's like ah, i don't know you so i don't like you there's like <laughs> like my friend don't know you you're not friends with such and such and i don't know i ain't never seen you over here so i don't like it so it's like i don't know i just try to i just try to stay i i got you know what i'm saying i got a some routines that I stick to, I rinse and repeat. And, but you know, like maybe that's just like mental health not doing the best. Like I be trying to, I be trying to snap out the, the rhythm, you know what I'm saying, every now and then, but I, I still am figuring it out, man. I still don't know. Yeah. No, but anyway, because, and, and trust me, if you don't want to talk about it, it's, I, don't, I don't, I'm not a hot take, like talk about the issues, dude, but um, the whole shit with Al Davino to me was weird. It was just weird. Yeah. Like, the original post that you posted, I was like, I don't see what's offensive about this at all. Everybody should just quote tweet this and thumbs up and move on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. was, the original post was just like, you didn't want to get lectured by white people about Islam, which is fair. 
Like, yeah, it was really just like, all right, well, one, before it even got to the point where, like, even any blood was to be drawn, mm -hmm. like, I had, I had been a good friend to this man for, like, five years straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I was a good friend. Like, just, like, even anything from, like, pulling up to his birthday party when I promised to him or, like, get, like getting up with bro and going to go yeah. get, like, some breakfast or, like, you know what I'm saying? To, like, like his girlfriend hit me up to see where he at because he, like, done taken something and got lost somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, like, I, I was nothing but, like, a pretty cool guy. It was really just, like, it. I don't like being, like, one, especially knowing what I know, like, is, like, there's so many, like, knowing him, it's like there's so many different layers to, like, why what he does is, like, so left field when it comes to being like fully invested into certain trains of thought you know what i'm saying right. so it was really it got to the point where just he tried to like he really tried to disrespect me and he like kind of verbally said things to me where he he was trying to like he he felt like it was going to be taken money out my pocket or like skin off my back you know what i'm saying and then it's like it really just got like because one like the thing the reason it was such a like people wanted to write me off is because like what i don't walk around and i don't flaunt it but it's like you know i've done my i've done my reading and i was like you know i brought i was brought up with like family members that got ties to certain things right. so when it comes to like this rap shit and people want to flaunt certain information and I can tell that you've been using this information to assert yourself over like other like black men that know themselves and you know what I'm saying like when the when the reality of it is like you being a white guy in the in that even like even in the culture or even in like a you know what I'm saying being a part of this train of thought you're not supposed, you're supposed, you should be humble firstly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, and one, it's like, I don't think that information is for you to be like profiting off of and like trying to flaunt it over people and use it as like a means for vanity, you know right. what I'm saying? Because like people cared enough to like give you this information, usually something good is supposed to come out of it rather than like you scamming your fans and stuff. And it's really just like, it was even to the point where it was like, yo, I've like other people have even come to me talking about him in like an invalid manner. And I've even held him down right. in those situations where it's like, like I've been like, nah, Davino is a solid, like Davino is a genuine dude. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got love for, for him, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was just crazy when it came around and then it was like, I don't know, it's just like motherfuckers try to act like they didn't know me. And that was really kind of like where, I don't know, like that's where I was like, okay, well, all right, it's nothing to lose in this thing. Cause like we want homies in the first place. If you like choose and try to disrespect me like that. I don't know, it's just like, I, I do my research. Like I do too much research and I walk around too many places and like show respect for people. Right. regardless of, of situations you know what I'm saying for people to try to look at me and be like I'm the one to like kind of just I don't know it was really it was really like motherfuckers had me had me fucked up because I thought we was friends <laughs> and that just won't the case you know what I'm saying so even before all this like five percent or like Islam like this that and the third it's like y'all nah bro you had me fucked up as an adult like you know what I'm saying like it's not even the rap industry at a certain point and then it's like for for motherfuckers to like talk is like to talk like they do in their songs you know what i'm saying like when i when i confronted you you didn't have nothing to say so it's like it's like you didn't know you was fucking up because people ain't been telling you you've been fucking up because right. people been letting you run with it because you they got money in you and they like 
they seeing they reaping benefits so they ain't going to stop you to say what needs to be said to you because y'all having a party or something you know what i'm saying right, but right. i get into these little disputes because i'm like i'm i'm about my business you know what i'm saying like when the shit happened i was in the really? studio running this man session for free right just giving them like giving them my like, upward like maybe by like me and my brother gave him maybe by like sixteen hundred dollars worth of free beats you know what i'm saying that he won't pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Like that was off the strength of us being friends. Like I bought the beers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like it is just like, I don't know. I be trying to be nice to people. And then like later down the line, I end up seeing how it come back backfire on me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's really like, it was just like, I had to eat a shot and be like, uh, like, damn, that's what I get for fucking up. Like trying to think everybody, somebody to be lamped up with like, but it's not, it's not like that. Yeah, no, it becomes a challenge to move how you want to move when other people are kind of acting in a manner that you never dealt with or, or being out of pocket in a way that is just uh, different, you know? Uh, yeah, it was yeah. just like different from how, like, you know, how people like to do the, like, they like to, when they when you buy when y'all alone they want to talk to you one way and then like they get around some new faces mm, mm. and they decide they want to show a different more luxurious side of them and maybe get a little belligerent too and it's like nah man like that's not oh man that shit was rough man i mean when and i i probably talk too much about this but back in the day i was a part of this poetry scene locally in maine uh, i've been maine mm-hmm. And I was like running the board and stuff like that. <clears throat> and like people that you were cool with, that you just got off the phone with, were like, cool, would hit the yeah. social media and be like, you know, all caps. Uh, and, and you'd be like, what happened? And we were just on the phone. Like, but they wanted to kind of show up and show off for the people. Yeah. And it got really hard to manage because that's just not how I do it. I kind of right. want to be same everywhere you know more theatrics <clears throat> yeah yeah i'm theatrical enough yeah, that, yeah without I try to generate all that shit right <laughs> yeah. but, not yeah. a super theatrical dude like all the time but it's like i you know i just got caught looking out <clears throat> you know? and like that's my thing i be trying to be like nice and i'm down to like try to like be a presentable chill human being like and i know i could be reclusive so when people hit me up to do things i'll be like yo you know what maybe i should step out and like say what's up to such and such and like have a beer or two and then come back home and like get some work done but it's like then it's like when i take the especially now bro like with this covid shit going on it's like yo when i take the liberty to step out of my crib for you and you try to like throw that in my face like Right. Yo, come on, man. Like, uh uh-huh. Yeah. It's tripping. No, it's it's <laughs> it was weird. And like I like I said, I don't have anything positive or negative with, with any of those cats. Like Ankle John, like Al Davino, I don't I don't know any of them. Uh, but I didn't think anything was wrong with it. I th- I thought you were making a specific point and anybody who's grounded in knowledge of uh, Islam in America. Uh, should I? I mean, yeah. I I was, you know. Yeah, I was just speaking on my situation, and then people just had issues with me for that. Right. And then, like, some people tried to like step in and make it seem like they understood the situation, but then like some time went on, and like motherfuckers try like tried to brush it over and try to make my shit, like make my situation seem invalid to me of all people. (laughs) <laughs> like try to somehow talk me into feeling like my shit was invalid. And I'm like, yo, why'd you come to me just to tell me who your friend is and why I'm supposed to respect that? Like right. you didn't come to me with any type of respect for me. So why am I supposed to give a fuck about who you and your friends are? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm with you, man. It's, it's weird. <clears throat> Talking about some other shit though. Talk, yeah. like, I would say, Richmond, Virginia rap really threw me a curveball when I encountered it. Yeah. I mean, we, all, we all knew the clips. We all knew Missy, 
right? That was like the first. I mean, that's not Richmond rap. That's seven five rap. That's yeah, but I mean, that's that's, that's the first time we heard Virginia like kind of mentioned. Yeah, yeah. In, in public discourse. Hmm. Um. Uh, you know, I I remember meeting hip hop heads from Virginia, and we would just you know I would just we look at each other and be like. You know, I'm from Virginia, you know, ancient to do but cook. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was great. You know, that we that, uh, he's still uses that as one of his DJ tags too. I loved I loved it. The uh but but the I'll tell you the Virginia rapper who really messed me up the most, and it was Nicholas F. See, Nicholas F is like a good mixture of all the good things of like all the good music things in Virginia that like kind of pass through, you know what I'm saying? Nicholas F probably does like, if there were intercontinental hip hop waters, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and Nicholas F would be the one that would be able to swim in all them shits. Cause he's the guy that will, like he'll bar you up on anything. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, and yeah, like he, he approaches, he approaches rap with like, which is the main reason I like develop so much respect for him is that he approaches rap with that same comedic, but I'm not fucking with you element. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like yes. I, I've been, especially in the past couple of years, I've been heavily inspired by Nicholas F and just like what he does. Cause like, that's the motherfucker that seemed like he put his heart on his sleeve and like, mm-hmm. he gonna do that shit regardless. You know what I'm saying? Like he, no, he, he, he figured it out. I, I mean, I was- He figured it out, yeah, exactly. I was just listening to old Drake mixtapes and being like, who is that dude? And hey, holy sauce, man. And once he I mean, from from Vices on through like trifling through like that run of mixtapes. Talking about it, he don't he probably he does. Don't talk about it no more, but he gave Drake that sauce. Drake yeah. did not play himself until he was rapping with Nicholas F. No, he was and because I was like, this guy is 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 dirty in that kind of there's a little bit of that ODB energy of like how grimy this is. It's like I might I might suck some toes type like raunchy rap. You know what I'm saying? Like get a get get a thick junk in the back of the van and we gonna film a video going over the Williamsburg Bridge like which but it's still like you know too if nobody's ever seen that music video fucking but it's still so much melody there's so much right bananas and then uh, he'll like he'll still be ahead and do like the auto tune too and it'll make yep. like make sense like like no, he, yeah it was it was wild and then the like i don't know if you remember the vice's cover but he had like the tissues twisted into his nose oh yeah that shit was i mean that was wild that's, but that's a good like yeah metaphor a lot of people didn't catch <laughs> it was like but yeah, because yeah, no, it was, and then to most people know like Mutant Academy and, and uh, Fly Anakin and and Concept Jackson and uh, they're just you know, Henny Henny Low and you know, just yeah, it's just, a, yeah. the home good people right there. They 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 don't miss. They just they just keep doing it. Uh, I appreciate all that. So it's it's just a different it's a different vibe. It's yeah. it's so wild. And even with all that, I still like I still manage to feel like I stick out like a sore thumb. Like I be trust me, I think about it every time I like I listen to it and I'm like, yo, like I don't know. It's nice to have a pocket dudes to like like you know what I'm saying, touch base on and be like, yo, all right, this what like, this is what the bar is right now, you know. But yeah, I, we, it's uh, what were you saying? I actually didn't even know. Go ahead. What do you feel like the personality of Richmond, Virginia rap is? Uh, like, what do you feel like the the traits of it are? Well, I mean, I don't know because I've never really made Richmond rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah that's fair. I, I mean, I'm not like. I mean, I spent a decent amount of time there and like, I love Richmond, mm-hmm. but I'm, I've never, and that's also partly like why I'm like kind of 
like leaning back towards home and stuff is because like I look back at one point I realized like, yo I don't I don't a hundred percent like I don't like a lot of the places that I've frequented in the past like decade or so don't necessarily feel on brand for me because it's the reason why when I go cert like when I go to other towns and when I do things the way that I do them, people still look at me like I got a third eye or something. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so it's like, Richmond oh, has been a music mecca. Like, Richmond has always been a music mecca. Like, you go back to the Jags days, like, Jackson Ward was called the Harlem of the South. Like, it's always been like, you know, they've always had so many different flavors it's not even funny from like war mm -hmm. to you know what I'm saying the shit that goes on now like like war to mad skills to yeah like you know what I'm saying that wave but Virginia always is gonna have some dead periods because you know what I'm saying? it's not it's not too many of us that do it I mean yeah it's Richmond I feel like you can't even put a finger on the Richmond sound because they just always been so elusive and they always like they're the big city in Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Always had a voice. So now yeah. that we're looking for like the place that's not New York City and stuff to find their like music fix, like Richmond is a reliable place that you could look for any, like even beyond hip hop. Richmond is just a good really good music city it's a really good city in general you know what i'm saying like it's really easy to get comfortable there you know what i'm saying awesome. but i think that comes out comes out a certain way just because of how richmond is and i feel like people think richmond's a certain way when they listen to all the music that comes from there and then they like they go there and they're like they're like looking for where the hot spot is. It's like, no, bro, everybody's at home. Like, that's why you heard what you heard. It's like, people gotta kind of mind their business at a certain point. Like, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, no, that's, but that is great though. The like, still feeling like you're kind of from a different planet than everybody else. Um, yeah. I feel like that's part of the excitement around Doof and why everyone I know is like really excited about Doof. Because uh, it's just, it, it feels like, like you cheated and you found, you built like the, the craziest character in a fight game. And <laughs> now you're just running through it. Yeah, that's, that's low key. I, I relate, yeah, I, I agree with it. It does feel like that, especially like now, because like for, I don't know how many times I've said this before, but for a really long time, I didn't really take the music shit as seriously as I really knew I possibly could. Like, right. it's it's always been like a secondary facet to like just me running around and like, it's, it's always been the byproduct of me running around and doing whatever the fuck I'm gonna do in my normal ass life. And I like, especially, hey, calm that down. All right, man. Uh, let me grab this pooch. Cool. Nah, you're in timeout now. Come here. Come here. Wow. Yep. He don't know how to act. This is Bentley. Hey. <laughs> but um, yeah, for a really long time, I didn't like. I didn't know. I like. I mean, the character was there, but I just was not inhabiting him. Cause it's like, I turn them off every single time I finish rapping the verse, you know? No. So it won't tell like, really like, you know, the, I mean, probably even pre COVID, like I kind of like figured out what I wanted to do with it, but it's like really just now that people kind of think of it as a thing. Cause you know, I got my instruments and I kind of string them together and I like, and I just, hey, I'm, I'm managing to share more of myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been reading a right. book to tell me I gotta like, I gotta keep people updated with what I'm doing and stuff. Stop. No, yeah, so, balance. You gotta find the Yeah, balance. man, just trying to figure out, cause it's like, yo, it's like the worst thing I feel that can happen to me at the end of the day is like, I go full rapper mode 
right and then right. <laughs> like lose touch with reality right no, it's, <laughs> it's, with anything creative when you're like doing it entirely for the audience oof, that's rough like yeah that's rough but it's like i gotta feel it feel yourself you gotta you gotta right. skin it. and that's that's the crazy shit about it is that like <laughs> see look at you knocking stuff over you're gonna look at it like you didn't know you was gonna do it go 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 ahead don't be out there so, but but i think the good part about where you're at is that like people like your shit because it's weird yeah so all you've got to do is keep being weird and you're good which yeah. if you would see that's easier said than done though because when it's just really like i can be as weird as i feel but it's like things change when people start like paying attention and like expecting things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah, expectations and shit. That's a whole other factor into it. So it's really, I just gotta. It's really, I just gotta keep doing whatever the hell I feel like it. Cause it's like trying to, the little bit of appealing to people I've tried to do don't really even seem to have been worth it at the end of the day. So it's like I. Especially now, like, that's why I'm, like, I'm in the process of, like, going back to Virginia and, like, <laughs> going back and just being around my family and, like, just keeping up with the people that, you know what I'm saying, are the reason I'm me type shit. Like, just just trying to actually just, like, be, enjoy, like, you know what I'm saying, just trying to enjoy actual, like, real life things that happen instead of just, like, waiting for my phone to ring and on some hip hop shit. Like, it's, like... I don't know. Like I'm, I'm learning how to create my own paradise. Let alone like wait for it. Like that's my, that's my idea. Of yeah, I used to be. I used to when I was writing regularly fiction stuff. I was really hard on myself of like page goals, like weekly goals, shit like that. And then I started yeah. to realize like, nah, the research is part of the work. Like sitting right. there, it is. That's what I, I'm having to work. teach myself. That yeah. Man. Like, even like watching shit like this Modoc stuff, like it's like right. I feel like a piece of shit for sitting back and watching like two or three movies back to back. But I like I usually end up reaping the benefits when I like sit down and try to draw or write something or like it comes back in some way, shape, or form. It's yep. just like I'm trying to just trying to control like or just like not even control, but just trying to make the joy always possible about it though like I, I always I started doing this shit to be stoked on it so it's like <laughs> as long as that shit's not a jeopardy I'm good like yeah yeah like, there's like a there's a real like Jeet Kune Do about doof like uh do you you've heard of Jeet Kune Do the the that's like when they be tossing each other and shit to or is that martial, judo it's a martial arts form that Bruce Lee created that was an intersection of all these different forms. It was okay. basically like slide into whatever you need at that moment, right? If you need to use Chinese Kung Fu, do it. If you need to go over here and use a karate stance, do it. it right. Was, it was adaptable, right? Yeah, it's being prepared. Yeah, being prepared, but being loose and like living in whatever moment you're in. And right. when I was going through and I was like, damn, Hood Rat Noir doesn't sound like radioactive spinach and then i went back and i'm like the fucking bridge strangler doesn't sound like anything like this is amazing and the mask yeah. i was like this is this is ugly shit like this is amazing uh all of it's a re like different directions uh it's exciting man you there oh there you go cool, cool. oh yeah my bad i got i did oh uh, yeah, I got a call from my shorty. Hold on. But yeah, I mean, yo, I'm I'm honestly like blessed to have that. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, like, I don't know. That's that's probably like some doom inspiration, really. Cause like that's just something I picked up just listening to Mad Doom projects and being like, yo, like, like, especially working with other producers, like working just from listening to like um food to 
mad villainy to like born like this, then going to fucking like like the the dog swim, like the danger mouse junk, then going to like the JJ Doom project. It's like all those have like a different flavor. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. it's all a different texture yep. to it. So it's it's really just like yo, kind of just trying to be me in any weather. You know what I'm saying? Like especially and if it's a self-produced project that shit is literally just a wildfire because it's like that's literally whatever beats i'm i'm rapping and i'm listening to my like it's, it it could get hard to even rap over my own shit a lot of times <laughs> because i hear it so much you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like yeah just just trying to go with the flow you know what i'm saying like just yeah especially when dudes send me like Yo, the hood, like the second Uncle Doofus project ain't really going to sound like Hood Rat Noir at all, but you know, it's going to be similar source material, just like different time. And it's like for me, also a large part of that is like, yo, any two projects I've made, like that's not even the same guy. Like I don't even feel like that dude anymore. Like it's not yeah. even, that guy's like gone. He's just, he, he's here. He's just like not. Like, I don't, it, it's just, that's really why I started making, like, really, that's, like, why I kept making music, like, after the first couple, like, the first project or so I made, like, it was just, like, it was, like, I was growing up, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was coming mm -hmm. out of high school and shit, and it was, like, especially when it was, like, the school ended and, like, real work began, and I was, like, kicking them with, with homies and, like, all this shit, it's, like, that's the really thing that helped me keep track of time and like kind of just like, you know, brain stamp, like punch the clock in right quick, see where I was at, like analysis of what was going on or something. And it's like, that's that's even the trippy part is it was like, I like now, especially now that I got it, like, you know, just be one, be, be a little mindful of what I'm putting out. Cause like, I'd be feeling things and it's like no feeling is forever and shit. But then it's just too, it's like people will hit me up today about some song I like made when I was like damn near homeless, like coming out of high school. And it'd be like, yo, this junk, like, re like I resonated with this one. And I'm like, oh, word, like, thank you. Like, I don't even want to tell them to listen to anything else because it's like, it exactly like you said, like, I can't promise that what you like back then is going to even be. Me. Like, I, had, I had somebody, I think I like one of my good homies be like, yo, like he was like, yo, I miss when you're like we used to make stuff like such and such. And I was like, I listened back to it, I was like, oh man, I I didn't know I had any problems when that shit happened. Like this, yeah, I was happy. Like you know what I'm saying? he's like, yeah, when you gonna do that again? I was like, I don't know, man. I didn't know I wasn't happy. Like I was like, oh shit, like I'm I was like, damn, you know, maybe, maybe one day, but I feel like, I don't know, nothing's beat to death if you don't, like, do it too much. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you I can to, always go back. Like, you have to learn to, like, le how to leave a part of yourself in that music. To right. That, that time frame. Mm -hmm. And keep doing it. And you kind of give a lot of yourself over the years. Yeah. Without really, like, understanding it that much. And I mean, even now, I probably still don't even understand how other people like perceive it and shit. But I don't know. It's interesting, like just the shit. Me, like we started making music as like a literal joke. Like you're like, haha, what if we became rappers? And like so now, people want to talk to me about the shit. Like that shit is. I still trip out about that shit. I'm like actually very thankful about it. And I'm like, I don't even. I don't know. I don't even know how to talk to people all the time. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, but I try. I really try. Being grateful is important. It's important to stay, stay grateful and it definitely helps helps move through shit. The, right. uh, I am on a Discord with a bunch of dope underground cats. They're all do fans. They're all big do fans. Uh, mm. One of them types in all caps, Mr. Proze. Uh, and he is, oh. he is in the mix. Um, and I I was on the Discord and I was like, look, I might be talking to Doof. Like, describe Doof's production style, right? Uh, How would you describe? Uh, Pro 
Jose said, raw emotion colors you ain't never seen before. It's a very prosaic <laughs> thing. It's really good. It's shout out prosaic, man. He's, he, he's great, man. I, I did an interview with him recently. He's awesome. Uh, I love Bloodstained Pages. But my favorite description was I'm doing an interview. Uh, oh, hey, this is my girlfriend. Oh, what up? Sorry. He said, what up? <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna call you a little bit. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. bye. <laughs> My bad, I didn't, I didn't want to ignore the call. I just wanted to show her what I was doing. So we're talking about Timepiece gave the best description, I think, of your production. Um, All right. Producer, Australian. Timepiece said, your production is Mad Lib on Acid, Mushrooms, and DMT. That's like a decent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's like, yeah, I feel like that's actually like the thought process. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a solid mixture of things. Yeah. I I like all those things. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I was thinking about this when I was listening. To, I listened to like We Hate You Three and Or Cut Avenue. It just that was like definitely Dog, like, I, like that. that one got some blurs on there. Like that's a lot of songs I made getting really like while I was getting probably the most waste that I was getting in my life. And yeah, that is, wait, is that the one? Is that the one that's like, we expected everything to go wrong? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I was writing it and I was like, I felt like Edgar Allan Poe, man. I was like, yo, I'm so, <laughs> I was, no, actually I was, I was writing that shit, working like the one of the most ridiculous shifts of like, yeah, man, just yeah, bro, that's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, thank Rev for that though. Like Rev made that beat. You know what I'm saying? Rev, Rev understood that. You know what I'm saying? Me and me and Rev usually like we've been on the same page and shit. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to like music and it's real casual when it happens. But yeah, that was like that was kind of like probably like a tip, like a tipping point just in like time, you know what I'm saying? Of of like my music shit. Cause that was like that was like the that was probably the first project I released when like fucking like when the COVID shit happened. Yeah. No, it was I You've worked with some pretty incredible producers, NCL Tim. Uh, you've the Gray Matter, totally different sounds. But and you, as you said, Rev, what what are you what are you looking for when you're collaborating with other producers and like working their sound? Like, does does it have to sound like yours or not like yours? Or what do, what are you valuing on that? Well, it's, it depends. Like me and. Me and Gray Matter like ended up making stuff because like we're we're friends and he had like a he had like a certain raw like kind of like blue and green feeling like sounds that I really fucking with. That's why like all the all the radioactive spinach stuff is really kind of like old. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's all old doof songs. Like that's so it's like that's that was like even a whole period of time in itself. That was actually a lot of different periods of time in itself, you know. So that's that's the homie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't I don't know. I just find myself in the situations like me and me and Revenant got to work in because uh, he was working with the homie Grim Doza. I've known like like known Doza for like years, and like he produced like one of my favorite Grim Doza songs at the time. I think it's called Diablo. And is that Psych Word was, Records? Is that the Psych, huh? is that Psych Word Records? No, nah, that's no, no. just oh. like that, that's just like some, you know Jersey like Jersey Gremlin shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, that's they, that's yeah, that's like that camp over there in Jersey. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so we I just showed love like on the thing. I was like, yo, this is one of my favorite beats I've heard like right here. And like apparently he'd known about me. And I was like, oh shit. So he sent me some stuff. We got that project done in like 
mostly in like like the first the we hate you two junk we got that junk done in like two days mostly and then like did you know what i'm saying added some other things down the line and then he's like yo yeah this is done you know what i'm saying the uncle tim shit that came about because uh proze had me rap on one of his songs uh when the uncle zay shit they the first one they did or no i think it was the second uncle zay tape they did pros they had me rap on like two beats on that project and like i guess tim heard it and like he hit me up he was like yo i didn't know you rap really like i guess he only knew of me as a producer right but he was like yo i got a i got a hunch you know what i'm saying like let me send you folder of these beats and let's see what happens and i was like all right work and I think it was also like something like he had, like from what he told me, Pharma Beats had challenged him and a couple other producers to make like, uh, it was like a Seven Deadly Sins project or like the Seven Sins project. And like every producer got to pick a fucking like a sin and such and such. And then he got stuck with Glutton. So he hit me up, he was like, we gonna make some songs. Like he's like, we we gonna make this song. It's basically gonna be like about gluttony. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Or like sloth. No, it wasn't gluttony, it was sloth. Ooh. Being lazy. Yeah, it was sloth. So we made that one song. We made the the song, I think it might be the last one on the project. It's called Rupert. Yeah. And I was just rapping, I was rapping about having like an actual pet sloth named Rupert, you know what I'm saying? And fucking like awesome. Yeah, and then he fucked with that. So he was like, nah, man, fuck. He's like, he's like, yo, I don't care what they're doing with that project. Like, we're about to make something. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to make something. And, like, that just snowballed into its own thing. You know what I'm saying? And then between that, I was just working on, like, self-produced projects. Like, I did, like, uh, what? I did, I did one of the junks. I did more junk. More junk wasn't really like it was a couple songs self-produced. That was like a homie mixtape project, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. It's like even been a completely different stretch with the music shit since like the COVID switch up. Cause it was like we finally sat back and was like, oh shit, we can just sit here and make music. Like it's like, oh word, like we don't gotta get up and go. Like <laughs> that's, it, weird. Yeah. that's why it's weird, like. People are really struggling to figure out whether music is in a good shape or bad shape. I'll see people online say like, this is the best year for music ever. And then the next day be like, there's been no great releases this year. And just try yeah. to- like, I mean, it's like yeah. people's heads don't be in the right spot. And especially like, I don't know. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, man. I feel like I got some gatekeepers, like some homies that know some homies that they know I, I want to know but they just don't be telling. And I feel like it's people that they know will fuck with me and they just don't be telling people about me. You know what I'm saying? But I just be, you know, I try, I just try to like, I guess, keep it what it is. And then like, I mean, yo, it's more light on the, on the thing now than I could have ever imagined it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like some years ago, like a decade ago. So it's growing. I'm just like, I, especially just knowing how, how life works, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work with a lot of, like, I'm trying to work with some people for I, before I, at least I go out, you know what I'm saying? God forbid, like, they go out, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? I want to, I'm trying, I don't know, life is short, you know what I'm saying? Life like, is short, man, but, but the good news like, is, I don't know anybody who's like, doof is trash, doof sucks at this. The worst thing I ever hear about Doof is who is Doof, right? Like, right. I've heard it was trash before. I just be laughing. <laughs> the, uh, but no, it, it's people. I people are genuinely excited by by what you're doing and how you're moving, and it's it's wild because, like, I th I thought you were fairly new to this, right? Like, you're on call out culture. Great appearance there. And I'm scrolling and I'm like, man, another project, another project. Like, it's just busy. Um, yeah, just different, man. It, yeah, nah, I got a whole I got a whole other band camp full of shit that I buried. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been at it like at least a decade, at least. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
and then yeah. was, so it's it's different it's it's just two different modes to like the the hate you series to something like bridge strangler which you produced by yourself right yeah that was the second project i produced for myself how was produced that uh, produced I produced that on the iPad before Mad Lib was making, before Mad Lib was talking about making stuff on the iPad. Wow. I produced a lot of that on the iPad. I produced all the DF on the iPad. I produced, I produced, uh, Max is a real face one on the iPad and then put it through my 404. <laughs> but yeah, man. Was, yeah, that's just, that was really kind of, just getting back into the music thing. Cause I think I stopped like making shit for a good bit. Cause I was like getting settled up in New York and stuff. And I just didn't have my situation for like record music figured out. And uh, yeah, that was just one of the, that was one of the good, it was a good period. You know what I'm saying? It's just getting back to making the beats. I think my mom had given me like a new iPad <laughs> so I just, like I got the programs rocking on that junk, got to make mm. shit, and yeah, man, it's just all like it's all it's my therapy when I can actually like focus on it. You know what I'm saying? It's like especially now I gotta think about like promoting shit and like trying to ship shit out. Yo, if anybody hear this and I owe you CD, I love you, and I'm getting them shipped out as soon as possible. I'm yeah. trying to. <laughs> the uh, one of the, one of the things that that is so that I think is so interesting about your production style is you'll take a sound that is beautiful and you'll make it like jagged and like mutated, right? There's like a Toxic Avenger thing <laughs> that happens, and then it goes back from mutated and jagged to kind of beautiful again. And it's just this weird magic that you can Hey, man, that's just how I be feeling, man. <laughs> you gotta go from beautiful to goofy right quick. Yo. Yeah, man. I just, I mean, it is, yo, I'm still learning all these beat machines, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I'm just surrounding myself with the thing and just trying to crank some out, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, it's ill, like, just for the people that actually, like, that I really love that like my beats and be like, yo, that's, that's fucking crazy. Like I, yeah, man. I, I just have a, I just have a couple processes that I got down, and it's like I just go with one until I get super bored, and then I switch it up some other how. I just, I don't know, get stupid sometimes. Just don't be afraid to make a bad beat. You know what I'm saying? Make like, make like five bad beats if you got to, and then you're gonna get that one, and you're gonna like have goosebumps and shit and you're gonna be like oh word fuck yeah niggas yeah bro it's really just doing it it's like i like i try to meditate just sitting there and i can't i can't even get my head right sometimes but it's like when i actually get moving with with like just working with these with these machines and stuff and actually just get moving being inspired and just like moving my hands to do anything you know what i'm saying that shit that shit helps me out and that shit like it's that's the clarity that I be needing. Like that's the shit that made me realize I don't need to be going out and being around people all the time. Like it's, nope, yeah. You're doing your own shit, man. It, it, but and it your your production has real like movement to it. It doesn't float. It doesn't, you know, uh some people are really good at the kind of like a preservation comes to mind as someone where there's a lot of ambiance and a lot of space and it kind of fills the room. Um, right. But like your shit is always moving it, as, as dark twisted or, or weird or soulful as it gets. It's always, yeah. it's always marching. It's, it's straight off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way that I got a weird, like sick twisted way of looking at it. Like I, the way I be saving it on the B machine, it's like all, I don't finish the, I don't think I'm finished with the beat until it's like, at least on the 404, it's like, I don't, I'm not done with it until it's on one pad. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I keep all these one pads just full of stuff. And it's like, <laughs> I do think of it as like a, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking like a specimen and I'm just locking it away, you know what I'm saying? Put it in a little, 
put it in a little pokey deck. You know what I'm saying? It, but it's like it's yeah, it's a, it's all I like. And then from there, it's like I literally it's like a car that I could pull out of a garage and like drive around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep it. I keep it like boxed in a little bit so I can like move it around and like go and like do different things with it. So you could hear it one way on like one thing. It could be like something else somewhere else. Like you even getting to the point where it's like, I be having to chill out. Cause like I've gotten to the point where it's like, I make a beat and then I'm making a beat out of that beat. And then I got like fucking five beats that all sound like the same exact thing. Yeah. And I'm not even like a huge like transition guy. I just like, I just like, it's like a collage for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. and it's like where, where a lot of, where I feel a lot of people want things to just like be so transition and flawless and like, like so well thought out for me. It's like, yo, my brain is moving. Like, <laughs> it's like I started wherever I started and then it's like, go move. If I if it moves any direction but forward, you know what I'm saying? Like you know how like like a Tarantino film, it'll start in the middle and then they tell you what happened in the beginning after that. Like it's like yeah. I gotta remember that before I even go down and start putting shit onto the pad. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta I gotta think beforehand. Like it's like a little got like a little OCD going on. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, I mean and the weird. You talk about Tarantino. Today, I got to go back to the movie theater for the first time in a long time. Mm. Uh, me and my oh, wife. Oh, where would you be? Me and my wife. And we saw that, I think it's called Man of Action, the fucking Straytham. It's a straight. It's what a is Straytham? It? Something of Man? What is it? Wrath of Man. There you go. Why is it? Is the new Jason Statham junk, though, right? I got to see it. Guy Ritchie. Yep. Yo, I think they put him in the new Grand Theft Auto as well. I think he's one of the main characters, low key. Oh shit! It looks exactly like him. That's awesome. Like the dude, but yo, nah. It's I've never heard the phrase "frasem" before as like a genre of a movie, but it's a genre that I'm a huge fan of, and I didn't know it had a name. Is it? But it's like, yeah, bro. It's okay. But, thank you. But Guy Ritchie is like. The, the director of that, and he's done like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch, and all these movies. And he's like, he's one of the weirdest legends in directing because there are people who are like, ah, he's kind of trash now, or he's back a little bit, or like, mm -hmm. but it's because, like you said, he doesn't really do a lot of transitions, just hard edits, vignettes, cuts shit up, mixes it up. And sometimes it's brilliant, and sometimes it doesn't work as well. But that's hey, the game, right? That's like yeah, that's, that's the name of the game, man. I already got started. Like, <laughs> you know, they already got started. We go, we go figure it out, though. Like, yeah, no, I gotta, I gotta watch that. Like, what other movies has he done? Because like, I'm now, I'm just now getting to the point where I'm willing to watch like a director's other movies. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, it's a uh, lock, stock, and two. Smoking Barrels is the first one he did. It's cons everybody like really digs that one. It's like it's very British crime movie. Mm. I love uh, that. Snatch is like really kind of beautiful, refined version. Oh, he did Snatch. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that one song. That's from that. Yep. Was it it's on movie? like. Mad skate, yeah. skate video. She's like the is, uh, and the uh, problem is he went from lock stock to snatch to like swept away with Madonna, and people were like kind of done with him. But then he kind of yeah. made Revolver, Rock and Roller, some really weird, fun ass movies. Uh, I love fun movies, man. Like niggas be making it seem like fun movies are not like <laughs> cinematically genius and shit. Right. But it's like I'm to the point, especially like becoming like an older person and like realizing what I like and like what kind of just like makes me depressed for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I don't want to watch a movie that's sad as fuck, dude. Like, why do I want to do that? Like, for what reason? Like, I was like, yo, why? Like, and I mean, yo, sometimes like if it's, I'll watch a documentary, right? But I don't want to see, 
like a cinematic portrayal of just like depression. Right. Like, like, man, come on, like, why? Like, why? Come on. So, but what was it, Roy Wood Jr. Do you remember the Roy Wood Jr. bit about like? Roy, wait, he's wait, he's in a the, movie or? No, he's a comedian. He did the bit about like the the slow motion black movie, like oh yeah, fall. You know, when, like when the character gets it and falls in slow motion, and like oh, the, the single tear, you know, like the, <laughs> uh, the you know the face shakes as it hits, and you're just like, oh, this sucks. Bro, uh, I gotta see that. Like, God, nah, Roy great. Jr. We're, is like one of my favorites right now. He's he's awesome. He's got great stuff. But I mean, and I I had to do this in music, right? Because I've been covering the shit since fucking whatever 2011, uh, mm-hmm. and we would give out like yearly mixtape MVP awards to whoever was, was the dopest. And there were some years where we we're like, yeah, that's the fanciest shit. And that's the shit that people like and that everybody's kind of saying they like, mm-hmm. but I'd rather listen to themed right now. Like, you know, <laughs> it, it, like some people who were just killing it, making fun music. That, that was awesome. Like, I don't know. Currency was like that. Right. Like, Currency was was smashing it, making fun ass shit, and I was like, "Man, I like I like this better than the sad shit you guys are into." Um, <laughs> it's like, I don't like, I don't like. Yeah, nah. I feel like that's what a lot of uh, that's what I get out of the like whole, you know, what I'm saying like the the people that don't listen to like the quote unquote real hip hop shit because it's like it's like yo, after a certain point, you can't knock somebody for like that song that they have fun when they hear you know what i'm saying like that's like the purpose of all of this so it's like yeah no nah, i have it yeah it's you can't you can't hate like fun like you can't be so artsy that you just don't have fun no more man that's like the, yeah. yeah yeah that's like really what i that's my that's the name of the game for me i got a saying the first nigga that don't have fun loses yeah oh it's that's, that's first crazy. first person to not have fun loses. That's that's the fucking name of the game. That's like <laughs> the bodega sign for Jesus and Barrow. Yeah, that's that's your bodega sign. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, But the but yeah, no, it goes back to comedy, right? Like comedy is the truth in three dimensions, right? You can't have the fun without the the shittiness of the situation, right? Right. Gotta we wouldn't it. have as much fun if things weren't so shitty. That's right. that's a fact. Wouldn't be funny. Wouldn't be funny. <laughs> wouldn't be, wouldn't be funny. <laughs> yeah, dog. Nah. That Trump shit was terrible, but dog, is that shit funny? Like that. That shit is hilarious. Like, oh my god. Like it's it's horrifying, but it's mm-hmm. somehow like the best form of comedy reality had to offer. Man, like that shit. Fucked up. Like even. I mean that like and that's that's all political opinion side. There's like just like being a being a con a a connoisseur of comedy, boy was that good. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Especially now, like it's not even over. No, it's, 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 it's probably not, not even over. Dude. It's like it's sick. That's one thing I've been I've been like uh been getting back to my roots like i used to watch the news with my like with my grandparents all the time and it's just mad funny because now i just watch it by myself it's like bro these these racist white people are scrambling like they're doing they're in a mad dash to like do everything it's insane it's like yo it's it's pure comedy like you can't even make it up how funny it is and my friend (laughs) who was was not a trump supporter was hitting me through the whole administration he was like yo Trump is the funniest president ever. Straight up. Like, yeah. <laughs> and like, and that's why, like, there were Trump supporters who were like around the peripheries and whatever work environment. And I was like, and they were acting like it was gonna be a movement. And I'm like, don't act like you can replace that dude. He's funnier than these cats. Yeah. You know, Ted Cruz ain't funny. Like Ted Cruz is not funny. He be trying, he be trying to be funny too. That's the funny part. He's not ironically funny. He's not. He's not funny. like he's never funny on purpose, but he is a hilarious dude though. Like he's like, like bro, that tried to dip out the Mexico shit after trying to lock Mexico, like lock Mexicans up, like for forever. Shit it was like that shit. Is, like bro, what? Like that's that's some shit off the office. <laughs> like, some, I mean, that facial hair alone was pretty wild. 
Political comedy, political comedy. <laughs> so we, we talk about the because I like I was fascinated by your production, how unique it is, and I was thinking in my brain, who would you, if you had your pick of anybody to produce a whole album for, who would it be? Um, there's some people that you've worked with who'd be pretty good. Um, um shit. Me and Progs have been talking about doing some. Yeah. That's like that's like that's like a given though, because that's like family, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. His and voice like, is fantastic. I wanted uh, there's like like I mean one Nicholas F I would like produce for him, like like Nicholas F would be one. <laughs> and then who else? Shit, I don't I don't even know because it's like I would have it would be like it would have to be spur of the moment, really. I like I would have to hear it. And like, really, you know what I'm saying? I produce, you know what I'm saying? I produce for like people like all around, but it's like it's it's, it's few ones that like like I I would have to really hear like I mean yo I honestly the project that I really been bent on producing like trying to really do it is like my bro Essie who I grew up with Essie the chemist like. Mm-hmm. He's also an amazing producer and shit, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to produce for him because that's the, that's the motherfucker I know that can that can actually like rap on that. You know, and it's like that he was built to rap on that. And but awesome. I don't know. I just I don't, know. I don't like yo. If I could get Madlib to rap again, it would be ill to have him rap Ooh, on Quasimodo. One. Yeah, if I could get a Quasimodo verse, bro. Ooh. I'll 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 bring the shrooms, dog. We can we can go to for the sake of this broadcast, we could go to Colorado. You know what I'm saying? Culture. You know what I'm saying? And like we could drive shrooms and shit. I'll I'll bring the shrooms. Nah, I'm I'm trying, bro. I'm like of all time, like for real, for real, I just I'd like I even just want to be in the same room as Mad Lib, bro. Like that's really like like the way that that man was talking about, like yo, Dilla was like speaking to him, like it's like, bro, he, like I was so little, like hearing his shit that he had been like talking to like my music brain, like since mm-hmm. I was like a little little kid, like just hearing him through like video games and shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I was like, especially when I would get any time I would like, you know what I'm saying? I would like just beatbox. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like I was never like the the beatbox like kid for like freestyles or nothing, but like I would just like I would beatbox to make time go by. You know what I'm saying? I would like, but I had like little machines. I didn't really know how to use. Yo, ill shit. My girlfriend like gave me this shit for Christmas. It's like the first drum machine I ever Damn. had. It, yeah, bro. My mom bought me that shit for Christmas one year. Like, but. Just like I was like that's the like I've been like I've been imitating that since like I was like a little kid. So it's like that's probably like exactly what why my mother's like, yo, it sounds like mad, but it's like, yo, I could never even be I can never even front, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like the like even before I even knew his name or like just what the sound was, like before I even knew that producers and rappers were not the same people, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, you know, it's just like no, it's it's insane. And Madlib did rap with Oh No and the Professionals. That was, what was it, last year. He's still, he's still going. Wait, did he? I think, yeah, I think he was rapping with Oh No. I think it's an album. Wait, album. I might got to go back and listen to that project then because I did not, I didn't hear, I didn't hear Shoot, that. I, I rocked it. I enjoyed it, man. They were having fun. The, Bro, I, I got it. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to listen to that soon. Uh, oh, I had the weirdest relationship with Mad Lib because, so I went into the army when I graduated high school, 1999, right? Mm-hmm. For college money, you know? I told everybody that, like the recruiter. Like, hey, I'm yeah, no, I was actually talking to my homie about that exact thing today. <laughs> so I was there from 99 to 02. I missed that chunk of like hip hop, right? So when I come back and I resettle in, you know, whatever, 03, I'm like, I'm like, you guys make, like, Madlib doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem, it seems like 
right it's like yo you heard it how you like wanted to hear it but you didn't know somebody was going to make it sound like that like it's like but you're telling me like, how do you know that that's how that all this shit? Like, like, yeah, come it's on. like what the fuck like and especially like, like the fucking that? like the like bro i heard it in so many skate videos and i just didn't know but it, like i also didn't know why i liked that part of the video so much like it's like mm-hmm. Like fucking like the dun 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 dun, 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 dun like that jump, bro. Like that shit. I I found that record recently too. That shit. Yep. It's a good. I I think I found that shit in like I think I found it in California, or I might not. No, nah, I did. No, I didn't find that in California. I found that in New York. Yep. No shout out to Nate Patron. He, he had a book called Bring That Beat Back that he put out like last year, uh, and it had an incredible Mad Lib chapter, really covering the whole deal and it really helped me kind of catch up to the whole history of it. Um, Damn. I got it. I got to peep that. What's that called? Bring that beat back. Bring that uh, beat back. And it's, it's really good. It's a really like it, it's history. It's the history of like hip hop production through the eyes of specific people at specific points. So the first chapter is like Prince Paul, because you can just kind of walk through 10 years of Prince Paul. Yeah. Um, and then it switches to Dre, switches to, you know, Mad Lib, and yeah, so it's good. You just, yeah. So it's going to interesting question for you here. All right. Your favorite non-hip-hop, non-rap album of the last 10 years? Um, favorite non hip hop album of the last 10 years. Oh man, let me see what was if it wasn't. I mean, bro, it probably have to be not nah, because what year was this made? That was not 2010. No, nah, that was like 2000. The last 10 years, bro, wait, time is flying. No. So like even 2011, I can't even. Whoa, let me think about it. I can give you mine as like a. a yeah, a give me. Yeah, concept, give me. Right, I'm gonna say because mine came out in 2012. It's a uh, Fiona Apple's The Idler Wheel. Okay. I'll probably have to I think say that was the um, same year as Frank uh, Ocean's Channel Orange, too. I think that was the same year. Yeah, that was a good year. Yep. Oh wait, so that that did come back. No, nah, I would have to say probably like the project that I that got the craziest amount of playtime for me, for real, in that time was like probably like the that King Cruel junk. Oh, which one? I think is it called like the ooze or I love King Cruel. We just there's uh oh man, he man alive from last year was incredible. Uh, but the one ooze was 2017, and then there was six beneath feet beneath the moon. Yeah, I think the but that the ooze junk, bro, that shit is like a perfect album, in my opinion. And I feel like it has a song called Blue on it. Let's I feel like it does. Because I fell in love with that too. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, that, it's like the blue cover art on it. Lonely Blue. Lonely Blue. Right. You know that? that song, that song is old. That song is I, old as fuck. Like even way before that album. Because it's good, bro. He used to do, he used to go by Zoo Kid. Yeah. And yep. like Around the time he did the, like, I think it was, like, around the time he switched from, like, Zoo Kid to King Cruel, he did this thing, because I, I used to be really into, like, indie music. And I follow this, like, a uh, French, like, music channel called La Blogothique, mm-hmm. and they basically would follow, like, different indie artists around, and they would do, like, street performances with these, like, with different artists. And he did that song, like, years back. Like, he'd been, I'd never heard it recorded, though. But, yeah, he finally put it on that album. Yep. And I was hyped to hear that. 
Yeah, you know for but no, nah, that project, that's a good breakup album too. Ooh. Go, you go have... shit. Did you hear Man Alive from last year? Nah, I actually I didn't hear it. I probably gotta oh, go back and check that jump. It's it it it's a fantastic album. It was actually it came out right as COVID came out. Really, it was like before they shut down the offices and shit. But it was right mm-hmm. as it was about to happen, so people were terrified. And right. Like, I was listening to King Cruel while I, while the world was you know falling apart. Um, it was just it was it's the soundtrack of COVID to me, uh, and it was high on my end of year list. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's excellent. He's still excellent. Um, yeah, I got it. I'd be having to listen to more music because I was like, I was like, yo, I started digging like a couple of years ago. So it kind of just ruined new music for me. <laughs> like, I've been listening to so much old music. I hear you. It, it's <laughs> people like the weird shit is if you look at, I think there's a, there's a, there's a website. I think it's called best albums ever. Dot org or something. And that sounds like a really helpful web- website. They list all the best albums of every year. Oh shit! You can just pull up, like, click on 1975, and it'll list all the dope albums that came out in 1975. 1975 is probably a crazy year for good albums. All the 70s, you would be going. Yeah, from, I was gonna say all the 70s. <laughs> you'd be all going the from, 70s, like, from, from Springsteen crazy. to the to like Iggy Pop to like fucking Al Green, like just everybody was killing it in their in these different lanes. Uh, yeah. Just <laughs> wild. And nobody really cared about genres or what genres meant. So Yeah, no, I feel like that was a very fluid year in general. Like people were like, I feel like all the blues, like the blues funk, like blues and funk dudes like kind of just like meshed. Right, and like the like a, I don't know the blues funk and the rock dudes meshed because they all were like I don't know that all like certain shit, bro. Like certain shit is just like I feel like certain shit gets classified in genres by like how it looks, but it's like I got certain Roberta Flack records. I'm like, bro, this shit sounds like metal, like <laughs> like. like like, yeah. but, but nobody would look at a Roberta Flack record and be like, that's a metal record. But it's like, yo, this this feels 100% like metal. Like, it's like, holy shit. And then it's like, especially when you just realize, like, a lot of that is just determined by speed. So it's like, you get the speed of certain records up, you forget how it was supposed to sound originally. Like, and now you don't yeah. even know what you're listening to anymore. Like, you're like, holy fuck, like, I was listening to a jazz album, but now it's a rock song. <laughs> I was listening to a rock song, and now it's a blues track. Like, fucking like, it's like, it's like this funk song turned into like a punk song. Like, what the fuck? Like, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> it happens all the time. I was watching some uh, YouTube thing where they were like, they were talking about this really important Kendrick Lamar song. I can't remember which one it was. But the producer was like, I took the, the Bruno Mars, the beginning of that Bruno Mars song, and I just slowed it down and reversed it and made this beat out of it. I just thought it was funny. And that became this big hit. <laughs> it's like, it's awesome. Yeah, man. Music is insane like that. No, nah, dudes, I've been getting to like that. Especially like mad fluid artists, it's like when you listen to it a bunch, you don't even know what it is anymore. Fucking King Crimson, dude. Woo! Yeah, King, I, I collect those. It's, it's like one of my guilty pleasures. I'll like come out of pocket for like almost any King Crimson record. Fucking. So any that's, of them. And, and that's what would be, that's what people used to do that I liked. They would put out a whole tape that was just samples of one group and be like, this is my King Crimson tape. You, you can't know? even do that. You can't. The thing is, though, you can't even. In my opinion, I can't even do shit like that because mm-hmm. dudes already like to be dickheads about samples. Yeah. So, it's, 
I feel like, especially like when people are like, yo, how do you get your shit to sound like that? It's like, bro, it's all like, bro, we are sample based artists, man. Like, it's like, especially when dudes like, all right, yeah, this is one thing I like, especially when dudes get to be in dicks about like you not telling them a sample or something. It's like, bro, one, all I got right now is my sound. So straight up, I'm constantly trading that with people that I don't know and that like I have blatantly come up to me telling me they want to use my shit or like my you know what I'm saying my thing or whatever it is that I have that's like not even mine you know what I'm saying it's like you know what I'm saying it's God given this shit's in the universe I took it from somewhere just how like they probably took certain things from elsewhere too like it's like I you know what I'm saying it's just weird like I, that's all I got after a while so don't try to take my sound you know what I'm saying like I tell people what I use I talk about like the actual things that I use but it's like what I'm putting into the machine don't gotta be you know what I'm saying what I'm putting in the secret sauce don't gotta be your fucking mm. business <laughs> <laughs> yeah no people people will come up to you and be like I love what you do I want to do that too. And they give me the exact really thing you use to do it. Like they don't really know that they sound like like the villain in a stalker movie. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't even know they're the villain. That's the thing. That's it. And they think you're the villain for like not telling them. And it's like right. and then you realize that's how super villains are made. You're like, holy shit. Like <laughs> that's the, that's <laughs> oh, the damn, bad it's a misunderstanding, dude. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like and you just don't know you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Fuck, man. You get I had to do, yeah, I had to do go crazy on me about that. I was like, dude, he called me a gatekeeper. I'm like, bro, I'm getting gatekept. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like, bro, come on. Like, I'm not about gatekeeping nothing. It's... Yeah, no, somebody on the Discord thread mentioned that there had been some really intense hip hop fan that was like, jumping in people's DMs and being weird about shit and, you know, I don't know, something, and that makes sense, but I'm sure yeah. that's it. It's, it's a couple candidates that come to mind. I ain't gonna give them no <laughs> light or nothing, but yeah, some dudes, <laughs> yeah, bro, certain, I had, like, some guy, like, some lo-fi dude, he was in my, he was, like, on my Instagram going crazy recently, like, he was, like, an alt-right lo-fi producer <laughs> and he was just like okay. he was just upset yeah he he was mad because i was like yo like i don't know it was it was just a similar thing to what i was just talking about i just posted a photo of myself with like my middle finger up i was just yeah. like yo it's not flattering to me when you hit me up like demanding to know shit you know what i'm saying right, like it's, right, not, right. it's right. not like i don't like it you know what i'm saying i don't right. take kind like i don't not to say i don't take kindly to it but it's like yo that's not cool to me yeah and then he just ass, yeah it's never that great like it's never it's never yeah cool. it's, it's like, yeah nah that's why i just lie to people like dude i don't even know anymore <laughs> Like, yo, I don't know. Like, people will ask me for certain shit. I'll be like, yo, like, I, I don't even know, man. I don't keep track of it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. No, it was like when when my my wife was pregnant and people in the office found out and everybody came up to me telling me exactly what I had to do. Like, these are the diapers you need to buy, yada, yada. Fuck? <laughs> so what I did was I just started telling them all that they were like, I was like, Absolutely, I'll do exactly that shit. Like, because you're not at home, you never, you'll never fucking know who cares. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're not good. Like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, nah, that's exactly like you got, you got to tell the world. Like, yeah, I'll do that. Uh huh. Right on. Sure. Absolutely. Right on. <laughs> right yeah. on. Exactly. <laughs> and it, I, the funniest one, the funniest bit I had, because what happens is you, I have the kid. They immediately start asking when's the next, one, which is insane. It's an insane thing to ask a human being. <laughs> That's a crazy but, thing to ask in the hospital room. Repeatedly happening. Like, like even a month later, just hitting me like, hey, when's the next one coming? And so what I started to do was like lock eyes with him, right? And be like, 
You tell me when, and I'll do it. <laughs> you send me the email, you're you in trouble. Me, you're in you trouble. give me what you were thinking, and I'll do it then. <laughs> right at it. Like, right, you I'm me. on it. You I'm tell on. me. <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you, dude. <laughs> they were not ready for you. That was, that was great. No, you played, no, you played that perfectly. That's exactly <laughs> how... I've got like yeah, I've got some uh, some mental con artist friends and they would have played that. They couldn't have played that any better. <laughs> no, Nothing better than a mental con artist. Nothing better. <laughs> the uh but that's awesome. So the next album, you said there's like a different direction. What do what do you what is your what is this the difference in that this one? What is the mood? I mean, the last one, it was really like just you know what I'm saying different it's just, I mean it's the same environment but it's like the last one I was more inspired by like you know what I'm saying the like I guess like more like a metallic sound Ooh. and then this one is more I don't know it's more like it's more bluesy but still kind of orange you know what I'm saying like it's I don't know it's it's I mean mathematically apparently it holds the same weight so technically apparently it's already done but we're just adding some pieces and things to it i'm trying i'm trying to get you know saying get the things done when i'm actually wanting to do them so i don't do it like i didn't give a fuck about it um so you only get one shot at it you gotta get to it right yeah exactly so yeah, it's just more, I guess, more of a relaxed feeling than the other one. Because the other one, like, when we made that, that was, like, pure, like, top of the line COVID when that was happening, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, things were just societally way more tight, you know what I'm saying? Way more, right. way more bugged out. But, yeah, this one, yeah. This one's gonna just be more relaxed and it's you know it's gonna have some cuts on it, you know. Awesome. I would say last thing, if you do a full project with Prose, you've got to unlock R and B Zay. You've got to get him to sing a little bit on on powder. Yeah, I think yo, you it. know what? Yeah. I think I think I could we could yeah, we could figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Nah, me and Zay. One of the first times I ever kicked it with Zay, I like came over to the ward way earlier than they were. They had really woken up. Like they didn't really want to wake up to like one, and I got to the house at like ten thirty, eleven, and Zay was the only one that was up, and we were just drinking Hennessy. So, I think if we get enough, you know, what I'm saying liquor, mm. and you know, what I'm saying just good soul records, you know, what I'm saying you guys figured. Figure what you know. What I'm saying we gotta unlock the mind of Zay. That's what, that's all that gotta happen. You know what I'm saying we just gotta figure out what Zay wants to let his heart sing on. Sing the song that he wants to sing. <laughs> the um, th- thank you for being here. Thank you for taking your time. Um, Shout yeah. out to you. Uh, Thanks for having me. And sorry I was like an hour late. You know what I'm saying? No problem, man. Shout out to the, you know, I would just like to say thank you to Ron O'Neill for everything you've done. Um, appreciate it. And if you, one of the, my favorite Doof songs is The Black Six. If you have not seen the movie The Black Six. Oh, yeah. Before, I have a physical yeah, copy no, of it. That's exactly why. Yeah, I have an actual like. Yeah, no, nah, I found that in real life before I found it on the internet. That shit was that. That movie's amazing. Yeah. That movie's a yeah, lot no, of that fun. Movie's great. There's a lot of royalty in that movie. Yo, yo, <laughs> put it on. It's a free music empire recommendation. Enjoy.